So today's which word of the day is hexus noun. Is it okay? I'm gonna take a guess. Is it like throwing out a hex that turns into a nexus? A hexus? <laughs> <laughs> well, that is why I chose it because this issue does have to do with a nexus. So that's part of why I chose it. But also, I'll tell you what it is. That's okay. So hexus is the evil spirit of destruction who embodies everything that is toxic to nature. Hexus is the main antagonist in Fern Gully! <laughs> Oh! <laughs> Tim Curry, Toxic Love, Hexus, that was his name. Fern Gully, the last rainforest. He is an evil entity whose ultimate goal is to destroy nature for his pleasure. He feeds off pollution such as smoke, slime, and sludge. He was once captured by the fairies in a tree, a tree, <laughs> but was freed. <laughs> One young fairy named Krista <laughs> then used her magic to help turn him into an actual tree at the end of the movie. So, there you go. Hexus. You can watch that movie again. I don't remember any of it. Oh my gosh, it's so good. And Maggie Smith is the old fairy, and she has this beautiful, like, purple, like, frilly dress. And then Krista, she's like, he's like, I'm Zach. And he puts out his hand, and then she's like, oh, Krista. And then her hand goes like this. Like, she doesn't know what a handshake is. <laughs> cute. <laughs> it's so cute. And, you know, Robin Williams is Batte. My name is Batte. It's a great movie. I remember that. You haven't even read that? Wait, what are you doing with the book? So he has the confidence to finish the story. Hear now the words of the witches. This is Kevin, and welcome to Words of the Witches, the Charmed podcast that will guide you through the lesser-known published material in the Charmed universe and decide how it fits into the grand narrative of the TV series. Another episode of Words of the Witches. We're on episode 57 now. I always forget. 57. And I'm Kevin, your resident charmed resource. And I'm Sean, and I just love comic books. Yay! Because we have poll results. Oh. We didn't have very many, so it's going to be a very short poll result. But I still want to read the answers nonetheless, because it was fun. Well, it's okay if it's short, as long as he knows how to use it. <laughs> <laughs> On Instagram, so yo muscle kid NZ says the underworld so he believes pepper is sent to the underworld because nina be a bad bitch maybe <laughs> um but on twitter our friend bobby iceman bobby calloway says <laughs> i'm hoping just a place where she can get discount frozen yogurt <laughs> <laughs> she's gone to the happy place <laughs> yes yes <laughs> and then charmed comic fan said tim buck too Timbuktu, you sent her to Timbuktu. Yeah, so <laughs> that was fun. I had, those little answers were great. <laughs> but today we'll be talking about the all or nothing. Cause I want it all or nothing at all. Remember O Town? Oh, <laughs> I do. Wow, you're really taking me back. <laughs> Take me back. All that nostalgia craze. So, yeah, the All or Nothing, this is issue nine of season nine, and it was published May 25th, 2011, written by Paul Ruditis, artwork by Dean Kotz, another new artist, coloring by John Hunt, letters by Jim Campbell, edited by Ralph Tedesco, Raven Gregory, and Paul Ruditis. And our cover artwork is by David Seidman again. Um, this was a beautiful cover. Uh, has uh, the same one that you mentioned last week with Phoebe and Paige. Piper is trapped in the scrying crystal, and she's wearing like her season five promo picture outfit. And the way the the crystal like sparkles at the edge, it looks like her boobies making light. <laughs> it, it does. <laughs> she's like one of those um, Austin Powers robots, fembots. <laughs> Fembot. <laughs> <laughs> So yeah, so she's really cool in the crystal. It's a really close up of the scrying crystal, which is really cool. I know Paige is in her, in her iconic necklace that she wore for season five, six, and seven before she changed it. It's really beautiful, and you can tell they're in the attic based on the walls that are there. This is the first um, sideman that I don't really like as much. I don't like it. I don't like the way Phoebe looks. She looks weird. I was gonna say that, like the faces, the faces are a little odd for me. It's almost like they went through 
a CG animator and we're, we're, we're animated. <laughs> yeah. I've been seeing a lot of those lately. I know. It's crazy. But yeah, the faces are just a little off. So I feel you on that one. Yeah. Uh, we did have a cover B, which is actually the same cover that they used for the collection of volume two. It's just a season five promo picture. They converted all of their outfits to black. Um, and we do see um, like little, there's a trick crutch there and like little writing of the first spell that Serena Frederick was saying, which is like ancient one of the earth. So deep master of moon and sun. You know, I shield you in my wicked way here in my circle around that. So that song, that little spell is on the bottom. Like you have to, you have to be a really nerdy fan to notice that, I guess, but <laughs> <laughs> it's, so it's perfect for you. Yeah. So that's those are the two covers. <laughs> Uh, I think that's all I got for this. So silence! (laughs) Here now the words of the witches. Let's get started. So if you remember last issue, it ended with like, Leo's like, she was the first witch. So this page starts with Paige being like, the first witch. (laughs) (laughs) So continuing the conversation. And she's like, is that anything like the first slayer? So we get our Buffy reference. I know. I love that. I knew you would appreciate that. And, you know, I don't really know much about the first slayer and things like that because i didn't get that far in the series but i know it's a thing so yeah there you go. she makes an appearance <laughs> um and they're talking in the conservatory here so they're like in their little you know this this sun room i love it and um the page is just like tell us about nina who is she leo's like nina was born before names and then page is like so is she like a warlock is she evil witch you know who is she so I have to call attention to it. That first panel with Leo, the man is packing. Bulge. Like, oh. Bulge. <laughs> Damn. That's a natural. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, maybe he's getting a little excited talking about this first witch. He's like, oh, right. I'm, so, I'm so scared I'm horny, you know? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> ah, oh, ah, oh. <laughs> so next mm-hmm. page is a beautiful spread. And it continues with uh, Leo saying, I wish I knew. I wish I knew what the fuck she was. But we see um, Nina and Rennick. This is very Dragon Ball. They're riding a cloud, Kevin. They're riding a cloud. (laughs) Oh, the good old Nimbus. Yes. Yep, the Nimbus cloud. (laughs) I love it. (laughs) So they're riding a cloud as all the demons of hell are attacking the up there's. And Renick says, you do know your evil army is not strong enough to beat the elders, right? And Nina goes, uh, yeah, you fucking moron. Of course I know that. But this is pretty much like a distraction. Like, we're going to fuck them up before they even know what's going on. <laughs> and there's some crazy looking demons in this picture. <laughs> yeah, like I'm looking at this like four armed, whatever, pink, orangey thing. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah like claws there's like a dragonfly looking thing there's like a t-rex thing with a there's leah michelle leah michelle there's some falling <laughs> off of the cloud there's some <laughs> demons like falling into the sky oh you're right oh, no. some of the elders are falling too yeah i fell through the crack oh oh <laughs> <laughs> didn't realize that was that kind of place but sure okay <laughs> so the next page we're back into the conservatory uh, and Phoebe now comes by with the Book of Shadows. So now Phoebe, Paige, and Leo are talking, and Leo's like, hey, I got a story to tell you. Her tale begins many eons ago. <laughs> and she's like, just to cut to the point, he's like, no, I have to tell you this long story so you understand. <laughs> and then, you know, we gotta find Piper, she's, and he's like, I don't believe she would kill Piper. And then Paige is like, but she killed Kyle! <laughs> <laughs> although technically she didn't it was Renick. she just held kyle oh so, touche so hmm. mm. leo goes technically kyle was already dead he's only moved on he's just like dead moved on what's the difference he's like actually there's so much difference <laughs> i low-key like hate leo <laughs> in this page I'm like leo get to the point <laughs> Yeah, so, and it's funny. Do you know the difference between moving on and, and being dead, I guess? I was going to ask you that, but yeah, let's let's hash it out now. So, I'm guessing 
that being dead still opens the possibilities to like being a white lighter or being a ghost whereas moving on like you're taking your spot in the up there's yeah you're right when you move on you're actually in the afterlife and you have you know accepted that you are no longer on the physical plane you're no longer on this earth you have moved on to a new plane of existence Okay, so. cool. So I read yeah. that right. <laughs> yeah. So I do love this idea that um, like Nina is so evil that it's out of character for Leo to be like, we can't worry about Piper right now. Like, I need yeah. to tell you about Nina. Like, it really builds the suspense. <laughs> it is so crazy for somebody who was like diehard Piper, Piper all the time to like have to like put her on the back burner is like a very interesting change. Yeah. Yeah. And it's interesting how he kind of knows nina so well he's like he she ain't gonna kill piper like calm down let me read yep. you a bedtime story <laughs> <laughs> yep so uh page is going through book of shadows very page and leo takes it from her and he says you're not gonna find anything in there and this very not flattering picture of phoebe says leo we have to do something <laughs> and he says you will but first you have to understand what you're dealing with until you know about her, you can't confront her. She's too dangerous. And he says, from what I pieced together, it began in the early days of humanity. I have to say, this is the best I've seen the Book of Shadows drawn in any of the comics so far. Oh. I do love the way the Book of Shadows is drawn here. It's perfect. And maybe because we get nice close-ups of it. Good. Maybe that's why. So Yeah. And okay. Leo's bulge is gone. We get a clear shot of it, and it's gone. It's gone. Uh, so the next page, we have little bubbles of Leo telling the story. So the bubbles are separate from what's actually happening on the pages. On the pages, we see Piper in her dimension that she's trapped in. And so with a lot of this story, it's probably easier for me to read what's actually being said. Because this is where the comic is very exposition heavy, and there's a lot to understand. So I'm going to take some of these pages slow. <laughs> yeah. Um, so... Leo's like, back when the world was a dark and tumultuous place, a spiritual energy runs through everything that exists. And we see Piper, like, alone in the darkness. And she's like, hello, anybody there? And then Leo goes, neither good nor evil. It is part of us, part of the earth, the air, everything. And he's like, the elders refer to it as the all. Oh, the all. <laughs> <laughs> if you listen to our morality episodes, and especially the neutral one, we talk about the nexus of the all. I wonder if that has... It's coming into play in this issue. I like all your like hand movements to really emphasize this thing. <laughs> <laughs> For sure. Beauty is. So then Piper runs around and she sees a pile of logs in the middle of nowhere. Sure. <laughs> a pile of wood. <laughs> and then Leo's like, you think the nexus under the manor is powerful? It barely registers when compared to the, ne the nexus of the awe. Thousands upon thousands of years ago, a woman came across that nexus and so piper goes to this pile of wood and she uses her new power her molecular acceleration power and she like holds them over them and starts a little fire Ooh. <laughs> although this gave me a clue about how her power works in this because with explosions is a very quick fast gesture you know like a very instant this almost seems like she's holding it there and has to kind of like put a stream of light out to melt it so it's more of a, a, a sustained mm. power. I like that. Yeah. And yeah, you're right. It does look like that. All right. So next we see Piper is uh, taken aback. She sees a man standing by the tree and it says she alerted her mate to what she had found. At first, they were too afraid to go near it. Even at a distance, they could feel its power. So we see Piper running towards the man in the shadow and she says, hello, hey. And the exposition says, but she pushed past that fear. As we see, Piper has approached the tree. She's looking at an apple. And it says she tapped into this power. And we see that Piper is picking the apple. Kevin, this seems very familiar to another story I've heard about a tree <laughs> and an apple. Oh, is and it, it says, very like Adam and Eve? Oh. What? Yes! <laughs> <laughs> and it says and was infused with more of the all than any human was intended to possess and then off screen somebody says to piper i wouldn't eat that if i were you don't you love how like 
before well, I was on the tree, it's this beautiful, like most delicious apple you've ever seen in your entire life. Gorgeous. To like, I picked it and now it's rotted. Mm. I know. That's why I think it's funny. The voice is like, I wouldn't eat that if I were you. I'm like looking at this apple. I'm like, neither would I. It's like rotten and disgusting. <laughs> like what happened to it? It was beautiful <laughs> yeah. like a second ago. <laughs> and I should mention that this dark place the Piper's in, it's very purpley and very pretty. Yeah, I would totally live here. I love purple. Yeah, I mean, it's pretty empty and desolate, but the purple colors are very nice. And actually, it's funny. <laughs> well, the next page of the Age of Destiny comes, surprise. But the purple sky, the purple ground, Piper's wearing a shade of pinkish purple, and the Angel of Destiny is wearing, like, a purple-looking thing. It's it's a lot of purple. <laughs> it's a lot of purple. Do you think they did that because purple is, like, the color of royalty and, like, knowledge? So this is supposed to be a hint as to what this place is? I like that, maybe. Ooh, Even if they didn't, it. they should have, because it's so yeah. poetic. <laughs> <laughs> so the next page, we see who saw, said, I wouldn't use that if I were you. It's the Angel of Destiny. Gasp! But this is the Angel of Destiny all the way from issue one that Nina sent through the portal. Connection. I literally just put that together as I was looking at the next page. <laughs> <laughs> so it, it's not all for naught. There's a reason for that issue one now to make this make sense. Hmm. So Piper is like, I wasn't planning on eating that gross apple, <laughs> but I think an angel of destiny would know that. And she's like, nothing that happens in this place is destined. What We are beyond the grand design. I'm like, oh, that's kind of a scary thought. Like this exists outside of, the order of the universe. Interesting. Mm-hmm. So Hepper's like, well, where are we then? And she's like holding her apple so sexily. <laughs> <laughs> and she's like, we're in a mistake in a place that should not exist. A magical construct that was an attempt to recreate something lost. And Piper's like, that doesn't clear anything up. What are you talking like in mysteries for? <laughs> like that does not help me. <laughs> and you also see in the background, another figure, shadowy figure. So how many people are in this place? I don't know. Unless, is it the same person, just in a different hiding spot? I mean, it probably was the same person that she saw before, but then where did this Angel of Destiny camp come from? So there's another, there's like three people here. Oh, yeah. The Angel of Destiny takes the apple from Piper, and she's like, as for how I got here, I, ma- I imagine it was much the same as you. So, yeah, we got thrown into a portal by a crazy bitch. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I think it's worth saying, too, like, the Angel of Destiny, we can tell she's been through it because her dress is in tatters. It's all, like, dirty at the bottom from being dragged through the mud. Like, yeah. she's had it. <laughs> all right. So next we see um, Piper gives the Angel of Destiny the apple, and she says, the better question is, how do we get out of here? And Piper says, I was getting to that. And she says, I've been searching for the answer for quite some time. Only the magic that brought us here can allow us to leave. And Piper says, you mean that woman, that bitch that dropped me into the swirly light. And the angel of destiny says, so you don't know what you're up against. And Piper says, maybe it would help if you told me. And then the exposition says, the woman shared that power with her mate and it changed them, making them immortal, making them invulnerable. Things be uncovered. The next page, we're back in the conservatory for story time. And we see Leo saying, It bonded them forever, her and her mate. It bonded bonded them forever to one another and to the all, creating a state of consciousness beyond the known physical universe, the higher realm, a place of pure and utter bliss that they shared with the all. But their presence there affected the earth. Their magical bond contained the all in the higher realm. Yeah, so to put this in better terms, they created this space where the magic, the all, so the source of all magic and all power in the universe is contained between these two lovers and and it. And they just live this, co- coexist in this life, completely taking okay. it away from the actual earth. That's that where it should be. I'm glad I have you here as my guide because this issue is a lot. It's a <laughs> like, lot. It's, really it's a lot to unpack. But it's a lot. <laughs> yeah. Yes. So I'm gonna hear. I'm here to break it down for you and the listeners because it's tricky. It's a tricky thing to get through. So yeah, if you have any questions, yeah. feel free to ask anytime. <laughs> okay. So then we were in the up there's, and speaking of the up there's, as this elder is dying, he's looking into the el- the up there's of the demons that killed him. <laughs> 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 so 
so it says the world started to die. The only way to save it was to separate the powers to allow the power of the all to flow freely again. And then we see elders running and we get this shot of Nina and Rennick and all the demons behind them running into the up there's. And Nina says, press on my demon horde, press on. And Renick says, having fun. And she says, you can't begin to imagine. <laughs> that's, 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 that's a fun little dialogue there. Very cute. Yeah. <laughs> so, okay, help me understand this. So the only way to save it was to separate the powers. So is that like the origin of good and evil they're saying? Not evil itself. It's not the source of all evil or the origin of evil. But this is kind of the source of witches and warlocks. And so oh, the, are they referring to the lovers? Like they had to separate the lovers because they were too yes. powerful together. Okay, and, and because because they're all contained in this one world, because the power that they all has, and then the power that they all shared with the two lovers, because they're they're a part of it now. They've been inf- like infused with the all because they're all in one spot. It's making the world Earth weaker where it should be, and they can't all be in one spot. They have to be separated so that that the all the power of the all can flow as it's supposed to. Gotcha. Okay. Mm-hmm. I'm keeping up. I'm keeping up. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So now we have ooh a double spreader, <laughs> and we see Nina climbing up the giant staircase to this beautiful golden statuesque building, and she's like, "Run, elders! Yes, run!" <laughs> like old cowards that you are. And there's a bunch of dead elders and dead demons with bleeding down the stairs. It's fine. And you can see, too, that these elders are throwing lightning bolts like Zeus. <laughs> mm. <laughs> Zeus-style <laughs> lightning bolts. This is different than their... Because usually this is like electrokinesis. Oh, which reminds me. Let me get to it. Power play for the day! <laughs> <laughs> Power play. <laughs> so our power play moment is electrokinesis. So here these elders are doing Zeus style like lightning bolts, which is very unusual. Usually it's that blue and white kind of very like static electricity that's very you know strong. I've never seen them throw both like this. But uh, electrokinesis is the ability to create and project electricity and lightning. This power is possessed by several magical beings, both good and evil most notable by powerful beings such as the Elders and the Titans. Uh, This power can ignite things or cause very destructive explosions upon impact. Also, by controlling the strength of the power, it can be used to torture others. Fun! What a good power this is! (laughs) Electrokinesis is considered very powerful, as it it is shown being capable of killing an Elder. Gideon and Zola. Oh, good old Leo. Uh, (laughs) This power is one of the six parts of conjuring the elements. So it's a part of, like, if you had the power to conjure the elements, you'd have what this power included. Uh, magical artifacts such as Athena's trident, which Paige had as a goddess, uh, had the power to throw lightning as well. <laughs> you, like my little gesture there. You stabbed me. <laughs> <laughs> uh, there is, in the show, we have seen advanced electrokinesis, which is the power to shoot immensely powerful beams of concentrated electricity. Unlike normal electrokinesis, this power can vanquish magical beings thought impossible to vanquish without the power of three. So this is what they had when they, remember in the end of the series when they invoked the hollow and then that demon threw energy ball at them and the charmed ones like absorb the energy ball and then they go and they threw these beams of electricity at him. (laughs) And then they did the same thing for the triad. That was the advanced electrokinesis. It was a very charged up, very straightforward kind of electrical beam. Some notes, a demonic power has seen trading this power to one of the fellow brokers, referring to it as Lightning Bolt. So maybe that's what's closer to what this comic book has, Lightning Bolt. And we have seen different colors of it. Red and orange have been seen. Like the evil enchantress had like an orange Lightning Bolt, which is Mm -hmm. interesting. Um, And Wyatt and Chris have used this power in the novel Leo Rising. Isn't that fun? (laughs) So there you go, Electrokinesis. Um, But continuing on this double spread, we see... Kyle Brody, who was supposed to be dead. What's he doing here? <laughs> <laughs> I think I get it, though, because now he's moved on, so he's in the up there. So he's not a white lander anymore, but he's moved on. Exactly. Well, I'm going to finish this page, and we'll talk about that. Okay. Um, so so there's this pearly gate, and he's like, 
Kyle comes out. He's like, we can't let the demons get through the threshold. And they're like, other elders, like this very beardy, like biblical looking elder. He's like, close the gates, close the gates. <laughs> and the, ch- the doors go clang. And then the demon's like, ah, I'm blocked out. Oh no. <laughs> Here. And look at this. Here, this elder says, oh, never mind. This is Kyle. Okay, this is Kyle telling the other elder, this is not a permanent solution. You shouldn't be here. You haven't moved on. So these elders that haven't died are hiding away in here. Mm-hmm. Uh, and so Nina's like, impedimentia, which is like this giant guard. So it's a beautiful female. Is this Was this a female? I don't know. It sounds like a female name, but maybe it's a man because it's got chesticles. So I don't know. But this giant troll looking demon named impedimentia is guarding the gates for Nina and Nina's like, well, we better go regroup and do something else. <laughs> oh, and then there's a little more exposition here that says the woman and the man were forced to abandon the higher realm, just like Nina is forced to abandon her current plans for something else. So, well, I think I want to say first off, I think there's a lot of story with the pedimentia. Like, because, yeah, is it a girl? Is it a boy? Plus, your name was like the one thing you were meant for. Like, <laughs> impede these gates. This is your only purpose. I want to see Impedimentia's story. Like, is he or she, are they like, wow, there must be more to life. I want to see them go to Earth and like try yeah. to make better than just impeding things. <laughs> Can I forsake my namesake? <laughs> 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 and then Impedimentia will meet Vaporeon, who's named just because of the control of water, and they'll like go on a journey mm. together. Fun fact, that's actually my favorite Pokemon. I know, that's why I said it. No, I didn't oh, know that. See. That's oh. cool. <laughs> yeah. Um, um, but yeah, so Leo, I mean, so Kyle has moved on, and these are actually the gates to the afterlife. Okay. So think look at it this way so this is the up there so the up there's are where the elders reside the upper regions connected to the up there's is this staircase this link this other building to the afterlife so the afterlife is part of the upper regions that is a separate sect of the upper regions that um the elders have a link to but they don't ever go to mm. so because they so that's why they can like almost convene with spirits and they have those they, they get certain communications with them in a way, that's I think that's what's and that's what makes a lot of the stuff in the show make sense because they say like the elders talk to this ghost or they talk to this person. How do they know this? And so, or they, or they have the power to send like you know the elders sent me down for your wedding day. So you, it does make sense that way. Yeah, um, which makes me think. I was thinking the opposite. So I think hell is probably a subsect of the underworld too. The underworld is a spot that has like a little other bubble where of hell where the spirits of the afterlife of evil go kind of in a sense although it have to be evil mortals not demons like spirits of the evil people (laughs) so (laughs) yeah so there you go back in the manor uh leo is still talking to uh phoebe and Paige, and we get this like awkward standing butt shot of leo (laughs) and it almost looks like phoebe's like looking at his dick (laughs) (laughs) they really objectify leo they really do they do so carrying on from the last statement, they were forced to abandon the realm. And Leo says never to return again. And Phoebe says, you know, this whole story sounds a little familiar. <laughs> just like we said. Ooh. And I love this. Leo says many belief systems grow out of the same source material. Thank you, Leo. That's been my point for years. All these people fighting over fucking religion. It's all the same idea. <laughs> Yeah, like, get over it. So I do. It was really great that they threw that, that in there. It's it's really yeah. nice. <laughs> and then actually, uh, there's a book, The Mist of Avalon, that had this really beautiful ending where like Christianity has taken over the pagan beliefs, and in the end, she sees a statue of Mary, and she says, "Oh, that's where you went." So the idea <laughs> that like her goddess like just moved into a new form. I love that yeah. so much. Really cool. But we're not here to talk about Mr. Babylon, Kevin. So, <laughs> so Phoebe says, okay, Leo, we got it. The first witch is really strong. And then Paige, this line gets so exposition-y to me. She's like, and not exactly a witch as we traditionally define witches. No matter. It's time to find Piper. 
It's like, thank you for clearing that up for us, Paige. <laughs> yeah, thank you. Thank you for saying that. <laughs> and then Leo goes, uh, 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 story time isn't over yet. <laughs> <laughs> and he says, once back on Earth, the woman gave birth to a pair of children that were conceived while she was in the up there's. Well, no, the up there's are different. The higher oh, realm. yeah, the higher realm. <laughs> This is a new realm that exists that they created with the all, so it's very crazy. See, it's keeping all this straightforward is insane. All this connect together. Well, and now like we're having these two children, so now my mind is racing more. Like, are these two children gonna be something? Are they yeah. already something? Like, what's going on? I know. It's like you're throwing <laughs> so much stuff at me. Yeah. Story time. Okay. <laughs> so Leo continues. He's like he says. The first child had powers like her mother, just not as strong. It is from her that most natural-born witches descend. Okay, so all witches come from this one child. Okay. Okay. The second child was born with the same abilities, but he twisted the magic for a darker purpose and gave rise to warlocks. And we do know that warlocks are essentially evil witches. And so, oh, here we go. Paige is like, aren't warlocks just witches that turned evil? And he says they are, but some are born that way too. So these children of Nina and her lover, we don't know who her lover is. It's not important right now. Um, These children had children and children and children. And that's where all these witches are descended, witches and warlocks. Um, But Leo says they had ones that came later that had no powers to speak of as well. But because they are descendants, they could tap into the magic still as witch practitioners. So even if they weren't like magical, they didn't have powers. They still had like an innate magical ability within them in in a little piece. Okay. And so in very rare cases, these non-magical descendants can give birth to a full witch. So you can almost like skip a generation or several generations, and you can still be a full witch born from non-magical parents because they still have that piece of magic within them. Okay. Um, So very similar to like Billy's parents and her grandmother and stuff like that. Interesting. Hmm. (laughs) <laughs> and I'm following because of X-Men and mutants. Like, Iceman's parents are both regular humans. But he's a mutant. So I'm I'm on the same page. Yeah. So it also explains why Melinda Warren was born a full witch to two non-magical people. Both of her parents probably were descendants of Nina and her lover, but were not a, a magical witch, per se. Just had the magic within them. So, ooh, ooh. Taking it all in. <laughs> yep. And then... There is this interesting line, but this can upset the grand design. So that makes me curious. Like, Melinda Warren wasn't supposed to be a witch. Like, that throws off the whole right. thing and changed the grand right. design. Is this not destined? Insane. Yeah. That was my brain. Yeah. And then we get a continuation of Leo speaking, but we're back in the place that Piper stuck, the beautiful purple place. Leo says... Your family didn't just come into the magic. You're part of her bloodline. So they're descended from Nina. Mm -hmm. And Piper's talking to the angels. He says, so you're telling me that the first witch is behind all this, whatever this place is. And she says it's an, and the angel says it's an attempt to recreate the higher realm, but she failed. And Piper says, why didn't one of you stop her? Isn't that what you do? And the angel says, I misunderstood her plan. Even if I had known, there are some beings we cannot touch. On that note, we should really move because there's like an earthquake starting. A rumble. (laughs) Yeah. So the earth is shaken. Pepper's like, it takes more than a little shaking to rattle the San Franciscan person. She's like, oh, wait, maybe I should go. It's really intense. Okay. (laughs) 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 This tree's going to fall on top of me. I better go. (laughs) Yeah, I like that. (laughs) Very funny. So yeah, so the tree just crashes down. It breaks its roots. It falls into a crack in the earth. Crashing. Crazy. And we still have that person hiding in the background. You you see Rusty. Rusty. (laughs) (laughs) This is like every issue now. (laughs) I know. It's a new thing. (laughs) If I haven't sold all of our listeners on um, buying Electronic Clue and playing it, then I don't know what my life is at this point. Right. (laughs) (laughs) So a continuation, we see the angels say, I won't miss that once I'm gone. And Piper asks, what happened there? The angel says, a person can't create an alternate plane of existence without a few side effects. 
And she says, which is to be expected when something occurs that is not destined. You see, the first witch exists outside of the grand design. Whoa! 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 <laughs> Whoa! <laughs> <laughs> so this is getting real insane. So this world yeah. exists outside of the grand design because it's her magic. The first witch exists outside of the grand design. So it's like, this angel of destiny didn't exist before her? They came out, They all came out about after her? That's what it seems like. It would be crazy... Even crazier if, like, the first witch designed the Angels of Destiny as part of a bigger right? design. <laughs> like, is she God? <laughs> right. That's what it seems like. <laughs> Insanity. So the next page says, Angels of Destiny have very little control over her. We are only witnesses to her actions, preferably from afar. So they're scared of her. Yeah. And then she goes, the Angel of Destiny, like, holds the rotten apple. And she's like, I am very sorry to do this to you. And she eats this disgusting apple, but then disappears into <laughs> a swirl of light and leaves this place. I'm like, what a bitch! <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, here's all the stuff. Bye, I'm leaving you. I'm escaping this place. Yeah. Sucks to be you. <laughs> I'm going to explode your brain. Bye. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my goodness. And the paper's just like, ah, the sigh. <laughs> so it makes me wonder, like, the apple as we know it in the the origin story is like this thing of knowledge and biting the apple gives you knowledge. So the fact that it's rotten and she has to bite it to leave is, do you think it's like her having to accept the horrible truth of what life is <laughs> to return to it? Maybe. And I'm also thinking too, because she said earlier that the only way to leave is by from the magic who, who created this place. And because in this tree grew an apple. This is part of her magic. So she had to eat this in order to escape. Gotcha. And that makes sense too, because it's dark magic. So it makes sense that like taking yeah. the magic into you to leave, like it's going to be bad. The What you yeah. have to do. <laughs> Eating yeah. a rotten apple. <laughs> yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm. Cool. Cool. So back in the manor. I get all the back in the manners this time. Yeah. Uh, Paige is asking Leo, where's the guy in all this? Her mate or whatever you want to call him. And Leo seems hesitant. He's doing that whole Aladdin thing before Aladdin says, do you trust me? <laughs> and uh, Phoebe says, Leo. And he's like, you're not going to like the answer. Kevin, my what? mind exploded at this part because I really thought Leo was going to say that he's the mate. I thought he was going to be like, I know so much about her because I used to fuck her. <laughs> Could you imagine? <laughs> Holy crap, hola. That would be a major head blown moment twist. Of, yeah. Oh my God. Wow, and then I want to see that says, story. I want to see that alternate dimension story. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Leo, and especially, like, he gave up his powers, but he's, like, the origin. That would be, like, what? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but spoiler alert, that's not what it is, um, spell orders. <laughs> but Leo does say, you're not going to like this answer. He looks very angel right there to me <laughs> from Buffy. Oh, yeah. And then Phoebe says, nothing new there. And Leo says he eventually returned to the higher realm without her. And both uh, <laughs> Paige and Phoebe raise their hands. Phoebe or Paige says, okay, all those suddenly on Nina's side, please raise a hand. <laughs> and Phoebe says, seriously, Leo, he could not, he could, wait, he could go back. Yeah. Yeah. So he was accepted back up there even after what he did. Yeah. So these are these two lovers, you know, and they're going to be together forever. And then he, you know, they got they left the higher realm because they were forced out, and then he just says, Deuces, I'm going back to the higher realm without you. <laughs> like okay, okay. So I can see why Nina might be a little pissy. So um, I think I think the understanding's flooding in. I think I'm processing everything. <laughs> for sure. It is a process. So I'm glad that this podcast can help you. <laughs> <laughs> Kevin got a text message right when I was done reading. I was like, input not detected error. error. I don't understand. <laughs> yeah, you, you have definitely have to process this issue very slowly. And again, <laughs> so, okay. So it continues on. We see the next page. Uh, Nina is storming the upper regions. Um, and the exposition says, every time a witch is born into the world, she inherits a tiny piece of the all could be a he too she or it should say she or he but whatever um yeah. 
Not a lot of the all, but enough that she can channel into an active power. So that's those are the magical witches. Rena tells Nina how long before they regroup. Uh, and Nina goes, we've got time. The elders were always better at hiding than fighting. <laughs> <laughs> and the exposition continues. With every new descendant, they all began to weaken. It was spread too thin. It needed to reclaim some of the magic it had lost. It needed one of them to return. So it seems like in order for the world to not be destroyed, somebody had to return to the higher realm anyway. Okay, okay. You know, they had to be separated. It was inevitable. So, and then we see Nina at the vault, says, let's crack this supper open. And this is our You Look Familiar moment. It's funny, she's so familiar to me, though. Reminds me of this old stray that used to hang outside my loft. Familiars, that's what I'm looking for. Have we met before? You look familiar. <laughs> Sean, does this look familiar to you at all? <laughs> no. <laughs> okay. Do you remember in Oh My Goddess... When all the elders were being massacred, much like this, actually. Um, and Leo had to bestow the go- powers of the gods onto the charmed ones. He went into the vault and then sat on those stairs and said the spell to release the powers of the goddesses. Oh. It, was this, it was right in front of this door here. This vault. That's so cool. Mm-hmm. So you can, I'm going to do a side-by-side of those, too. And there are, I mean, you can tell that this was definitely inspired by that. And it's the same vault, so... Ta-da! <laughs> That's cool because it like takes something from the show and expands on it in such a cool and interesting way. Yeah, so this is where they keep a lot of their um, artifacts and magical. You know, it's kind of like the hollow was kept in a crypt. These are all the, the ones that the elders possess. All these magical items that could be used for whatever okay, parts of history okay. and things like that. So yeah, cool. And on the last page, we're back with Piper. She's now all alone in this other realm. And the story continues, but he didn't abandon her, not by choice. One day he was just gone, and she was alone for the first time in forever. They had no control over what happened to them. His return to the higher realm had become part of the grand design. Mm-hmm. For the first see... time in forever. <laughs> I know. I <laughs> So we see the the shadowy figure that's been kind of hiding out in this other realm has appeared behind Piper. He's like, uh, they are <laughs> kind of sneaking up on her. And the story continues. The elders for, were forced to make a decision. They chose him. And then we see an apple being handed to Piper. She's shocked because the person handing the apple to her says, looking for one of these. And the story continues, as we all know, you don't mess with the grand design. Don't mess with the Zohan. (laughs) Yeah, don't mess with the Zohan. (laughs) And then this is when Kevin got the text uh, right after I saw this last part of the story. This brings up so many questions. (laughs) This like, whoa, the person holding the apple, Kevin, is Cole. What? (laughs) Cole? (laughs) What the hell? (laughs) <laughs> so this, this leads me to believe that Cole is the man that we were the talking lover? about this whole story. The lover. <laughs> so he was with Nina. So he's immortal. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, interesting theory there. We'll see. But yeah, I mean, they're def- they definitely try to make it seem like that. Oh, so um, I know it's not. Okay. I mean, it, it, I'm not saying anything. I'm not saying anything. <laughs> um, but wouldn't that be crazy? Yeah, because is it Leo? Is it Cole? Well, this is crazy. These people that were like involved in my entire life have to do with this bitch from the past eons ago days. So, like, I don't know. <laughs> yeah. And here we learn, too, that, you know, the lover didn't leave Nina by choice. Nina might be butthurt about it and really angry about it. But, you know, it seems like here that the elders chose him. He had a duty and he maybe he, had, maybe he didn't have a choice in the matter. And so he, he was just sent there. Yeah. You know? Oh, and actually, it's worth mentioning Leo or <laughs> Cole is wearing white, so that does allude to. Mm. You no, know, he's good. Yeah. Oh. So, and that's just to be continued. The last page. Whoa. <laughs> so, overall thoughts about this issue. So, what I really appreciate and love about this. Um, And when I mention things like this, I don't like use it as a shaming thing. I use it more as just a reference because I feel like there's no new ideas anymore. Everybody takes inspiration from everything. But this is very similar to uh, Queen of the Damned, the origin of the vampires. And I love it 
because that one was like Akasha created the vampires and then she was the lifeblood of them. So like if she died, all the vampires would be destroyed. And also like the more vampires that were being created, the more the power was being spread thin. So that's why she kind of went on a killing spree. So mm-hmm. I love that they've brought this kind of idea to Charmed. I love an origin story. I love that we got more about where the magic came from. So I am living for this, Kevin. Living! Very cool. <laughs> um, my my overall thoughts are that this issue is nearly completely expositional. Uh, yeah. <laughs> and, <laughs> yeah. you know, it's very intriguing, um, but it is a lot of information to absorb, as we discussed. Um, and it can often be very unclear. If I was reading it for the first time and going back and not investigating, I'd be, like, really lost. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, you know, I'm, and I'm curious about Piper and her whereabouts. That's very interesting to me and about Nina's history. I would have liked, though that we had an issue about Nina's history is like shown to us. Like we saw her past in a comic book form instead of being told everything we got to see it. I think that would have made things a lot clearer. Gotcha. Um, that makes sense. Yeah. Like see it in real time. Yeah. And the, they should have made like Kyle and the up there's a little bit. I mean, and we talked, I talked to Paul Ruditis on the episode and he said, you know, it's very hard to try to fit everything in 22 pages of, of issue every time. So they do have to kind of be clever in their ways, but um, sometimes it doesn't work. So like knowing that Kyle, that knowing that these were the gates of the afterlife is very unclear. I really had to like really like analyze and look things up and stuff to get that. Cause I'm like, what is this? <laughs> yeah. So. I feel like, um, my interpretation of the comic so far is like, I'd say maybe one through five ish. Paul was writing for TV and that's why mm-hmm. it was kind of hard to see what was going on. I feel like he's coming into his own in comic book writing and he's doing better about showing us the action, but you're right. The Kyle thing did throw me also that could have been done better or right. not at and, all. <laughs> right. And for sure. Cause he said that, you know, when we interviewed him, that this was his first time writing comic books, he's learning as they go. And so, mm-hmm. um, yeah, it's cool to see his development too. All right. I have nothing for canonical. I mean, nothing really that stood out. That was a big, big crapola. So, skipping that. <laughs> <laughs> what is your tip for future white lighters? Tips for future white lighters. Yes. Oh, really? Just messengers, guides. Think of us as guardian angels for good witches. Tips for Tips future, future white I was out being a force of good in the universe. Moral of the story. Um, I think just because I love it so much, my tip here is always be loving and be interested in everybody's beliefs. Because I feel like they do all come from the same general area. Like, of course, if if a belief is hurting somebody else against their will, like, we shouldn't support that. But everybody has a valid door to their own belief. I like that. Yeah. Just, just be open-minded and be willing to listen. You know, you don't have to agree. You don't have to, you know, succumb to their beliefs, but at least, you know, try to have a perspective. That's really good. Mm -hmm. Uh, My tip is just show, don't tell. (laughs) There's there's a lot of telling and, you know, that there is a place for that. I mean, you know, sometimes you do need it as a time saver and it's easy to do, but I like, you know, it's so much nicer to see things play out. And I think it's more easy to understand that way. I will say in its defense, the way it's told, it is kind of fun the way we see it mirrored within like Piper's mm-hmm. story. Right. And so that is value really good. In that. But yeah, yeah I could see the both ways there. Yeah. yeah. Players. Players. Mm-hmm. <laughs> All right. Next is, ooh, onomatopoeia. So what's your favorite sound word this time? So this one didn't have a lot either, but there is that one page that had like three on it. And <laughs> I think my favorite was crack. <laughs> crack of the whip. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and also I love crack, so it works. <laughs> not not the not the drug, Kevin. I mean, yeah, butts. but you know, some butt crack. I mean, that's yeah, I mean, yeah get it. <laughs> Mine is uh Clang, the one where they closed the doors on the demons. But only, mostly because it reminded me of clang, clang, clang with the trolley. <laughs> ding, ding, ding with the bell. Yeah. <laughs> I love how we bring our own self into these sounds. <laughs> our musicals, yeah. Meet me in St. Louis. There you go. I'm such a... Oh. All right. <laughs> so, okay, cool. Uh, 
Next is most valuable panel. What's your most valuable? Um, I, I went with a similar one before, but like, I just love this double spread of Nina and Rennick, like waging war on the higher realm with all these demons, all this lightning. Like, it's just very telling. You can tell in these two pages exactly what's happening. If this is all you saw of this issue. <laughs> nice. Nice. My most valuable panel is, I think it's the second or third time we cut to the conservatory and we see this beautiful shot of the Book of Shadows. Like it's a you know beautiful drawing. It's on like a basket table. We see Leo's crotch there, um, <laughs> and yeah, I just love. I st- still love the Book of Shadows as drawing, and we get a really good shot of it there. So that's my MVP. Next is sexiest drawing. Ooh. <laughs> now I have to clarify because this isn't sexy in the way like oh I want to fuck it, but it's sexy in like the appeal. Sure. This last image with Cole holding out the apple is sexy to me because it's like, where is this going? I want more. Like, oh, I love this that. This is so mind blowing. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. Um, mine is kind of a cool parallel to yours because my sexiest drawing is the first uh, time we see the apple where P- Piper is grabbing the apple. <laughs> so it's really quite a, a good player here uh so here is where it's this beautiful lovely luscious fruit and the way that she's caressing it you can always be like yeah it looks like maybe she's touching someone's face gonna kiss them or maybe it's a nice ball sack like she- <laughs> <laughs> oh, <laughs> this is no. a sexy it's a sexy caress of the apple and a beautiful luscious apple so that's my sexy strike <laughs> <laughs> only you kevin only you <laughs> <laughs> just fondle that apple mm, yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay uh now we're into issue ranking so you can do magically delicious pretty witchin a sorcerer's apprentice disenchanting or vanquishable so i didn't mind well i i don't know I guess I did kind of mind the exposition because the first time I read it, it was confusing, but I followed it for the most part. Yeah. So I'm going to give it Magically Delicious. This was such a good issue. Okay. Yeah. Um, I mean, you may have to read it twice, but it's still all there. (laughs) That's true. I mean, there's definitely a lot of intrigue, a lot of interest, and a lot of stuff going on. Um, But I'm only going to give it a Sorcerer's Apprentice. Like, it has, I mean, for me, it has lots of potential and there's lots of good things to love about it. But because of the exposition heaviness, and really, if you look at, think about it, like, most of the issue is just people sitting down in chairs or standing. <laughs> um, <laughs> or, like, st- sitting in a, you know, Piper six in a nothingness kind of world. I mean, the most action is happening in, in the up there's, I guess. But it's really, it's mostly just, like, running and slashing and running. <laughs> so it's not like the most action heavy in the grand scheme of things it is just more like just like a, a bevy of information um and so in that sense i'm gonna give a sorcerer's apprentice just because you know it's there everything's there the potential is there i just want more <laughs> fine whatever i don't care why should i care what'd you have for lunch today i don't care <laughs> <laughs> no it's good i love that you love these that makes me happy let's see if there's any notes that i want to mention here oh on twitter Holly Marie Combs said that Sidemen's cover is brilliant for this issue, which is interesting because we didn't love it as much. Um, and I do know that our friend Aaron said this was his favorite cover yet. So, oh, wow. <laughs> but I think, I think you know, Phoebe is dangling a sparkly little thing. Of course, you'd be like, ooh, pretty. <laughs> no, I'll, I'll agree. Like, the idea for the cover is pretty cool, pretty different. And I think Piper and Phoebe, page have a pretty good likeness it's just phoebe's is so jarring to me yeah what's interesting about this issue is paul ruditis has decided not to reveal before it came out he did not reveal the title of this issue um but he organized a small contest on twitter for people to like submit their titles and see who you know which one he would like the best <laughs> oh <laughs> i mean no, it wouldn't be the actual issue but he just thought of fun like what what name did you come up with kind of like with our polls like what name did you come up with and uh okay. <laughs> the one that he liked the most was desperately seeking piper to, a, a, <laughs> a play on desperately seeking susan yeah <laughs> yeah and that fits like the the charm mythos of using titles and skewing them slightly mm-hmm. yeah he had another title in mind that was spoilery okay oh interesting 
Yeah, his his other title was just going to give away too much. It's <laughs> it was going to be like Nina is the source of all witches. <laughs> right? Yeah, right. <laughs> Nina, the first witch. <laughs> <laughs> when uh when Star Wars Episode Two came out, my friend came to me and he's like, "I learned the title is Palpatine gets Skywalker." I'm like, "A, that's a stupid title. B, that's that would describe exactly what it is." <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So that's that. I guess next would be. Our P is for Paul. Piper. You mean it's it's just you and Prue, huh? Baby? Baby, you there? And a big hello to you too, Penny. Come on, Patty. The rest is up to them. Paige. My name is Paige. Hmm. Another P, imagine that. P is for Paul. <laughs> so for next week, <laughs> my question for the listeners for the spell worders is. Does Cole's return excite you, confuse you, or anger you? <laughs> I think that would be really funny because there are some not, not Cole fans or people that don't like him in the comics. So, um, and then there are some people that love him. So it'd be really cool to see the mix. <laughs> yeah, I'm trying to think of where, like, because I am excited, but I'm also very confused. So I'm gonna, yeah, I'm where gonna do you go stand? Confused. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I would probably say confused too because at this point I'd, I'd be like. Why is he there? How did he get there? What? How much does he know? You know, I thought you were dead a long time ago, or I thought you were like, I mean, maybe because where he was, he can like travel between realms, but it seems even like to him to get here seems like a stretch too, you know? So. Yeah. My only guess is that somehow if he is Nina's original lover, then he never truly died of the spirit, even though he was like in nether places. And they talk about how he got accepted into the higher realms so that would fit like why he's wearing white. That would be my mm -hmm. guess. Okay, cool. All right. So that's all I got. Next, Kevin, is issue number 10, Three Little Wiccans. And it says here, with the power of three torn asunder. It reminds me of the Friday the X-Men song. <laughs> um, Phoebe and Paige work to bring their family back together, but a tragically ill-advised plan pulls the charmed ones further apart and could leave one of the sisters lost forever. <laughs> Your plan is tragically ill-advised. I love that. <laughs> <That's right>. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> And I'm sure we're not going to lose one of the sisters forever. Like, that's a lot. <laughs> yeah, it's a lot. But we'll see what happens. Ooh. Um, so that's it. We are done. Uh, tell everybody where they can follow you. Well, this week, Kevin and I are back on Solving for X. We're talking um, Savage Land, Savage Heart with a storm stand, which was really oh. fun. Oh, and you can find me on the marvelous galaxy of Disney, which we always have updated news for you on Star Wars, Disney, and Marvel. Yay! <laughs> oh, and once yeah. upon a cult, but we're on a break. <laughs> we were on a break. Yeah. Um... <laughs> we're on a break. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. Cool. You can follow this podcast at Words of Witches on Twitter. Words of the Witches everywhere else. And um, yeah, you can email us at words of witches pod, but no one ever does. Words of witches pod at gmail.com. Uh, <laughs> and uh, <laughs> yeah, so we'll see you next week for Three Little Wickeds. Yeah. See you later. Thanks for listening, Spell Yeah, thank you. Your destiny still awaits, wavy hands. 